Does that sound familiar to any of you? Has anyone here ever been told by someone else the true and proper way to worship? A way that does not include a table that welcomes God's LGBT children. A way which we have to change our direction in order to experience the love of God. Have you ever found yourself in the land of the religious right, the land of Samaria, if you will, and wondered if you were ever going to make it to the other side? Would you ever reach your destination in Jerusalem of justice and equality? Put simply, have you ever asked yourself if things will ever change? Will we ever see a day in which the LGBT population experiences equality? Jesus knew there would be opposition, but he moved ahead anyway. And we must do the same. And when we do, and when we experience opposition, as we surely will, and as we surely do, we can act like James and John. We can cry out indignantly at those who would oppose us. James and John were nicknamed the Sons of Thunder. Apparently, they were known for their hot-headed tempers. They had seen Jesus perform miracles, and they had even recently seen him conversing with Elijah and Moses in a supernatural moment of transfiguration. They knew they were in the company and favor of not just anyone, but a human dynamo. And so their request to rain down fire upon these insolent Samaritans was not an idle one. They were deadly serious. Have you ever wished you could rain down fire on a few people? I know I have. Several years ago, as I stood on the steps of our city's courthouse while a same-sex couple from our community made their way into the building to apply for a marriage license, knowing they would be turned down, I wanted to rain down fire upon all the protesters with their signs screaming at our community. I wanted to rain down fire upon their pastor who stood smugly to the side. I wanted to rain down fire upon all the lawmakers who were responsible for seemingly justifiable prejudice. Maybe you felt the same way a time or two in your own life. Maybe you've prayed for God to do it on your behalf. Or maybe you've even seen what you could do to throw a few flickers of flame on your own. But Jesus turned and rebuked them. He didn't say, oh, guys, lighten up a little and just take a deep cleansing breath. He didn't roll his eyes and whisper to the person next to him. They didn't get their nicknames for nothing. Just ignore them. They'll cool down. No, he rebuked them. Like he rebuked the demon who had possessed a little boy, throwing da him down on the ground with the words, be silent and come out of him. And like he rebuked the fever that had taken hold of Peter's mother-in-law. It was that same firmness, and I expect with the same force clipped speech, that he rebuked his disciples. Luke doesn't record the words. Maybe they weren't the sort that could be repeated in polite company. You see, a firestorm wasn't on the agenda for Jesus. Tolerance and understanding was. The final verse in this morning's reading simply says, then they went on to another village. They didn't leave Samaria. They didn't turn around and go home. Their faces still remained fixed toward Jerusalem. They simply made some adjustments on the route. 
trusting in the journey and trusting in God's mercy that would see them through. The way of Christ is not a violent way. It's not a way in which we return anger with anger. And we don't return insult with insult. We people of the LGBT community know there will be opposition and we face it head on. But we don't rain down fire on anyone. We can be sure that there will be opposition to us as we set our faces toward equality. But we mustn't let that stop us. And if need be, we simply alter our route a little bit. But we keep our faces toward justice, peace, and toward God. Always toward God. Amen.